Here's the Blackberry Classic. Hi everyone, let's unpack the brand new BlackBerry Classic, which is a SQC105 model with no camera models. I bought this unlocked smartphone in November of 2022 on eBay and its design is still exciting. This particular Verizon model is set to work with wireless charging, but I haven't checked. The premium look and feel come from metal edges, a brand style corrugated plastic cover with a checkered pattern, and extremely good grip that feels great in hand with no case. It's beautiful, and no headphones in the box for this model, but no big deal. This is a device that you'll have a real pleasure to hold, even if you don't have fond memories of using this kind of a smartphone. There was a total of 5 variants for different carriers and frequencies, but the most interesting thing here is the colors. There are 4 of them, black, white, cobalt blue and bronze, but um, even finding an image of the last one is hard. Uh, cobalt blue is also very rare, and uh, each color is good in its own way and incredibly beautiful. In this video, I'll try to find an answer to the question whether the BlackBerry Classic is first buying as a feature phone or maybe setting it up would be too complicated and there is no point. In other words, could it be your second phone in 2023? But first, let's take a look at the original BlackBerry accessories that were designed for it. Original BlackBerry accessories included the classic soft shell cover in black translucent color, of course the brand and screen protector, and also two cases, the classic leather swivel holster and classic leather pocket, which were sold in black and white. The swivel holster is more for those who like old-style way to wear their phone on a belt, while I prefer the regular leather pocket and therefore bought it on eBay. You can still find one, even in white, although it will cost a lot more. Apart from the fact that it's very tight, made of leather and has a um, glassy look, it also has smart features. I found four in total, it activates screen automatically when you take device out, locks it with password when you put it back in, um, similar to how Apple iPad smart cover works, plus it can automatically end and answer calls. That said, uh, the concept of auto accepting any call doesn't seem to me to be a great idea, but uh, luckily you have options in the phone app. Overall, the case works great and can be called a truly indispensable accessory. So, does a BlackBerry smartphone work at all now? The short answer is yes. I set up this device as new and it still works. You might already know this. Please don't believe the journalist who didn't grasp the topic and claimed last year that calls, SMS, internet, etc. will no longer work. These are fakes, and the truth is, my device previously wasn't used at all, coming right from the factory, as the seller said it had been stored in a company closet for a long time, and it still works for me after the initial setup. It's true that it needs to be activated in a special clunky way, and that's the first downside I'll start my video with. Yes, uh, the activation process can be tricky and may not work for everyone. BlackBerry OS X is for some reason made in a way that it needs contacting service for initial setup and first connection to Wi-Fi. Fortunately, some savvy users have found a way around the standard procedures using the screen reader feature for people with vision problems. There are plenty of YouTube uh, videos on the subject and uh, I'll leave links in the description to the ones that helped me. The whole procedure took me 10 minutes or maybe I was just lucky. It should be 
noted that you'd better not insert a SIM card or try connecting to Wi-Fi during the activation process, mm, just saying in some videos they forget to mention this. Of course, for such an old device you'll need to replace the battery. This particular classic was made in August of 2015, so it's over 7 years old. Unfortunately, unlike the BlackBerry Z10, Q10 and especially the BlackBerry Bolt 9900, to which classic should be compared, um, the battery here is non-removable. However, it is quite possible to replace it, uh, which I urge you to do. With the old battery, my classic was running down by 15% overnight with cell service turned on. I mean, not data services, just mobile network. Fortunately, I found a quality copy of original battery online and had no trouble finding a workshop that agreed to replace it. My new battery lasted up to 7 days in standby mode, which is not as good as feature phones and not too bad either. But I must add here that unfortunately battery drain on BlackBerry S10 is a common thing, more on this later. The biggest annoyance is this notification. The funny thing is that a similar notification also bothers those who logged into their BlackBerry ID before January 4 of 2022. These notifications come on average two times a day, but appear less if you don't use internet things. However, even in standby mode, notification comes once a day. As a solution, you can set up a separate notification profile. In it, you have to turn off system sounds and customize app notifications, for example, phone app for calls. This profile can be added to quick settings and switched when necessary, for instance, when you want to hear all system sounds. The built-in Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 processor was a disappointment even 7 years ago when BlackBerry persistently used an extremely outdated platform from 2012. This is particularly noticeable when you try playing videos at a higher resolution or using Android apps. Android emulation runs only on a single core of the dual core processor inside here, while Android Runtime version 4.3 makes it impossible to install most of the modern apps. However, Telegram X, which was updated recently and essentially is a light version of Telegram for Android, works fine. No surprise here, of course, as Telegram works pretty much everywhere, including my iPod Touch 4 from 2011. I was, however, surprised that Facebook Messenger Lite still works. One of the obvious downsides is that BlackBerry Hub doesn't work to its full potential without social networking, BBM and uh, BBM video. However, mail and calendar providers can be added successfully. The built-in browser is not very usable due to outdated certificates and also the lack of site exceptions, although I don't think you really wanted to use it in the first place.
Finally, some of VPN services work here, so open VPN standard is not supported. However, you can still use IKEA version 2 VPN services such as hi.me. Here are screenshots of how it must be configured to make the connection work. Battery drain is a common problem on BlackBerry S10. After some investigation and reading CrackBerry forums, I concluded that the cause might be a deprecated build in Amazon App Store that should be like um, removed using such a C, then device rebooted and Amazon not opened. First real problem for me was the X fat driver for my microSD card, which I installed with such a C. The thing is, uh, BlackBerry S doesn't support X fat out of the box and tries to load it from servers when installing microSD card with this format. Obviously, after January 4, uh, a device won't get anything from the service, however, I found this driver on the internet and installed it manually. Unfortunately, I had to uninstall it because with it I had almost 15% battery drain overnight with my new battery. After removing the driver and resetting Amazon App Store, the battery life returned to what it was when I just replaced the battery for a little while. The lesson is just use FAT32 microSD cards. The second main problem was Android apps. Basically everything may be culprit that eats battery, while a device monitor shows that nothing but system consumes energy, so go figure. In the end I had to do a clean install with auto loader and have an empty phone that I'm showing you now. Well, now I hesitate to set anything up and install apps as it will end the same. See, solving any of this is hard as factory set or flashing will have activation fin consequences, so it's not an easy option. Just don't use anything or install everything, maybe you'll be lucky. And charging with micro USB is slow as hell, of course, so you can't ignore the better drain situation. The fundamental BlackBerry phone weakness is, of course, support of non English languages. To start with, your language must have an alphabet. Mm, ideally, the number of letters should be not much higher than in English, because then the typing speed goes down. In other words, few languages can feed on this keyboard. I have put an engraving with a Cyrillic alphabet, however the tactile sensation changes after the keycaps are engraved, and buttons feel in the way scratched. Also, the BlackBerry Classic specifics is that it's difficult to switch keyboard layout. Well, no designated icon appears on the screen and there is only one keyboard shortcut to switch languages. Although I suppose none of this really matters to you. The lack of BlackBerry World and Protect is easy to get over. I was lucky enough to briefly use BlackBerry Z30, Passport and Classic a couple of years ago and I can confidently say that. But I feel bad for Assistant and Dictation feature which don't work for locally. Fortunately, the main use case for Assistant is simply typing what you want to do on the mechanical keyboard, and it works in the few languages it supports. As for voice input, it's a pity that the key doesn't work. However, you wanted to enjoy typing with a mechanical keyboard, didn't you? It's much harder to leave without BlackBerry Link, as a device doesn't appear in Windows File Explorer or Mac Finder, and files can be transferred that easily. While transfer can be possible via Bluetooth SD card, but only use FAT32 format as I said earlier, or via Windows network file sharing. Keep in mind the network file sharing options are recommended to be switched off because it may cause battery drain too. At the same time, a microSD card I believe doesn't drain the battery. Another big annoyance is that you can turn off the auto brightness and backlighting of the keyboard. Also, you know, LED notifications are great, but there's one problem. You can't turn off the annoying low battery notification. Even with the sound off, LED will blink in red when battery is lower than 10%. Right, this can be useful, but I would still like to have more options. Also, let's talk about user interface flows. Mobile internet is turned on separately from mobile network and can't be controlled in quick settings. You can only enable or disable the communication model altogether. Also, opening quick settings in apps with two fingers can be difficult, as well as opening swipe down menus with app settings. Actually, the swipe down menu as a UI solution is questionable. You never know really where this menu is available and where it is not. In addition, the OS doesn't really take into account that my device doesn't have a camera. For instance, app permissions for camera are still here, and while the camera app shortcut is not there, no other app can be added to the empty space. 
It's also frustrating that device theme is tied to the device screen type, with black for OLED and white for IPS screens. You can choose it on the system level, but you can set a darker light theme for some apps. A separate mention should be made of the controversial UI decisions, especially in BlackBerry Classic. See, there's always a selection shown somewhere on the screen. My mind selection could be hidden in case trackpad is not used, just like the cursor is shown in browser only if you tap the trackpad. With this UI, however, you can sometimes confuse user selection and trackpad selection. Looks weird. You can't revoke some permissions for Android apps, like for microphone. Said. And another complaint, the contact group functionality seems half-baked. You can't set a specific ringtone or LED signal to a group, only to an individual contact. Some feature phones have this, so it's strange to see that such a business-oriented OS didn't address that. So let's start with stop quality sound during calls. A noise cancelling system with free microphones is what makes this possible, although Classic never got the feature from BlackBerry Passport that automatically adjusts speaker volume based on how close you hold the smartphone to your ear, still the Classic's sound quality of usual calls or a speakerphone is pretty decent. If you are going to use third-party apps, especially out of nostalgia rather than utility, I got good news for you, there are plenty of old native apps and games. Funny that of all the titles, Angry Birds comes immediately to mind. You can find a trove of extracted bar files in private collections and a few other places. Installing them is possible with such a C, uh, you may still use some Android messengers and uh, very old Android apps as well, but they will most likely induce better drain and make a device unusable. You can even play simple Android games, but it's better not to torture your classic in this way after all. The organizer functionality still works, you can add Google Mail, Calendar or iCloud Mail accounts and everything is syncing up seamlessly. You have FM radio, which is useful when there's no internet or electricity. FM module is rare in today's smartphones. Classic has a very handy trackpad, which is helpful for text or multiple item selection. Using it adds in ergonomics, as there's no need to move phone in your hand. However, most things are in fact quicker to do with touchscreen, so it's more of an aesthetic and tactile pleasure. There are useful features called advanced interactions, such as lift to wake, flip to mute, flip to save power and hold to stay awake. In iPhones, the last one appeared only after iPhone X and it's called attention aware features on iOS now, so it's convenient. LED notifications and flexible settings for them is great stuff. In particular, you can select the color of a notification for an app or contact, 
I really miss LED notifications which became a victim of frameless screens and only remain in some Sony smartphones. To the positives of UI, in many apps you can hide useless sections of obsolete services such as BBM. Last but not least, this is one of the few smartphones in the world that has a non-camera option. It's very difficult to find on the market a modern smartphone without a camera for little money, and there is a demand for such models among those who work in some specific organizations and regions. Still, BlackBerry Classic is much more functional than a feature phone, while smartphones without a camera are extremely rare. Just don't forget to carry a power bank with you. Also, if you choose classic with camera models, it will certainly make better shots than a usual feature phone. If for some reason you need a smartphone without camera models and a feature phone is too dumb for you, there are almost no alternatives to the BlackBerry Classic. Otherwise, the legendary Bolt 9900 isn't such a bad option for a second phone if you want specifically a BlackBerry dialer. Also, keep in mind better drain problems with Classic. Perhaps you want the BlackBerry Hub, Messengers or a couple of other Android apps? Well, all of this will not work out, as better drain makes a device unusable for almost all imaginable scenarios except calls. Therefore, BlackBerry Classic feels just like a museum piece which Bolt 9900 currently is. But perhaps... It's a BlackBerry OS 10 that makes you nostalgic. Whatever is the reason for you, my opinion is no, it is not for buying in 2023. Even if you can manage to set it up, something will ruin better life anyway. So no, bad for calls too.